Hi YouTube, Neil here with Facelift Interiors. Welcome back to our channel. So in this week's video, we re-upholstered a captain's chair. Hopefully you can see it somewhere now. Now. So this chair is called a captain's chair. As you can see, it's all deep buttoned in leather. So we had to do all the woodwork on this job. So we had to sand it down, take it back to the wood again, restain the wood and then lacquer it all. And then we got onto the upholstery afterwards. There's loads of tips and tricks in this video. I'll show you how to scythe down leather, how we go about sanding down and refinishing wood, deep buttoning or diamond, or diamond tufting. So if you like upholstery tips and tricks, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Hit that notification bell so you know when new videos become available. Also guys, please don't forget to follow us over on Instagram. We'll put the handle up again in one of these corners. Without further ado, so this is how you reupholster and restore a traditional captain's chair. Action! In this video, we are going to be reupholstering a captain's chair, which is a little, lovely, little deep buttoned sort of armchair. So what I'm gonna have to do is, with leather, you have a real issue with the leather that I use is about, it goes from about 0.9 to about 1.1 mil thick, which is obviously not very thick, but with regards to making buttons, it's very thick. When the button clamps around it, it can't clamp because the leather's too thick. So what we're gonna have to do is send some off to be skived down. So companies I've worked for before, you have to sit there and a Stanley knife each button, so you you cut each hole and you have to sit there and skive it all off. So I'm just going to open up this leather. So what I'm going to do is oh, open this up. What I'm going to do is I'm just literally going to cut. See these little off pieces here on the edges. See this bit here? You can't, but you can now. So I'm going to send that off as well. And this bit here, lob that off. And I think that should be plenty. So here we have our buttoning machine. And what I'm going to do is hit, I'm just going to show you how we used to have to do this. So I'm just going to put that on there. I'm just going to take a button off the side. So see there, now we've got a button. If we try and put that through the machine, it's not going to work. So let's try and make a button. That goes in there, that goes in there. Oh God, you can't even push it down. It's that thick. But we will. So now... So you'll see, see that that button hasn't worked. So I'm gonna show you what we used to have to do. Just gonna get a blade, bear with me. So what you have to do here is you have to thin this down. So I've got Stanley blade there. What you have to do is take the thickness out of the leather, out of the button, well, yeah, out of the leather. But you've also gotta be very careful because the blade is very sharp, so it will just chop side of the lever off and if it does that you're fucked. Right, so we take most of the thickness out of that so let's see if this works there you go ladies and gents that has worked perfectly you see how long that took me to skive down so what i'm going to do is i'm going to send this lever off to be skived down for me howdy how we need to start stripping this chair down but before we do need to do that, we need to address the wood. There's a real issue here. So you can see there's a gap here. I need to try and close that gap. And also there's another issue where this comes off. What I'm probably gonna do is dig out these holes, try and get all this glue out. I'm gonna start stripping this down, just taking all the lever off, just gonna see what's underneath it. Because I do need to, I do need to glue this, and then I'm gonna clamp it back together. As I'm clamping the front, I can hear the back popping open. So what I might need to do is take it totally apart and then fix it together again. As you can see here, we've stripped it all down. Now we're going to glue and clamp. All right, so that's the clamp on. So what I'm doing is, Adding this Errol dye in. Basically, this is going to turn into like an epoxy resin. Very strong is what we need for something like this. So then what I'm going to do is... I'm also going to go in from the bottom as well. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing the epoxy in. Right, so first of all, we're going to take this off. So we're going to reuse this bit of wood. We're going to replace the foam. Up she comes. So 
what I will do with this one. So I'm going to put new foam on and drill holes. What I'm doing here, guys, is I'm using an electric sander, trying to get the varnish and most of the colour out of the wood. Now we're using nitromores, which is a paint stripper, to take all the varnish and colour out of the wood or as much as we can. I didn't find nitromores too great, to be honest. So you put one coat on, you put another coat on, you need to like blob it on and do it as thick as possible. Right guys, so what we've decided to use here is Nitromores. Nitromores is a paint and varnish remover. So I've just put the first coat on, so I'm gonna leave that for a little while. Wait until it starts to bubble up, then I'm gonna use this or this to scrape it off. But what this what this does is basically strips off the varnish and the colour. Then we'll probably have to give it a sand as well. And then I'm probably gonna have to leave it overnight to dry out because it's gonna open up the wood with it being so wet. And you don't really want to stain it while it's wet, you wanna stain it while it's dry, obviously. What I'm doing here is I'm staining the wood. I've got a rag and I'm dipping it into the stain, trying it to get it as close to the original colour as I could get it. And I'm just rubbing it on, trying to get it as even as possible. Trying to get in all the nooks and crannies. So what we're gonna do now, three, three and a half, three and a half, three and a half, Three and a half. So three and a half. So what I was doing there is I was just measuring how much I need to allow extra all around the edge. Here I'm gluing down my wood panel and cutting out some new two inch blue foam. The reason I'm using blue foam is because it's for a seat. Didn't want to use white foam because the white's a bit soft for a seat. So we use blue on this one. So now what we're gonna do to make the holes on the other side because we want to follow these holes. Make sure you go through dead straight. So here I'm cutting out notches for where the arms of the seat go. Now I'm cutting out the holes for the buttons. We're using a 32 mil drill bit, I believe that is. And here I'm stapling down the foam where the arms and the back panels go. Now I'm gluing down my Dacron and I'm going to start punching holes through this Dacron now using my fingers. All oh, right, so I've got my old template here. I'm going to use this to just cut out this new bit. As you can see down here, we've got our, we're gonna replace the foam, so don't worry about that. But we've just, we stained it yesterday, and then we gave you this first coat of lacquer last night. And it's a little bit rough now, so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna use some really light sandpaper, that is P400, so very light, and some water. What we're gonna do is, This is called a wet sand. You can hear it. All the roughness. So that feels really rough there to me. So what I'm gonna do is give it a spray, go over it nice and gently. Take all that roughness out. It's what happens when you put your first coat of lacquer on. After you've stained it, the lacquer will lift all the little imperfections in the wood. So that feels absolutely beautiful now. Right, so that is another layer of lacquer on. You see what we're doing there is he was going up, down, up, down. You don't want to have a consistent spray because you're going to leave blotches, you're going to leave run marks. So nice little bursts, keep it even. So we've left the wood overnight to dry. It's had about two or three coats of lacquer, so now it looks really beautiful. I'm gonna show you just now. It really has come out stunning. And it's got this real, I don't know if you can see it from there, but it's got this real sort of, where some of the color's still in it, some of the previous color. 
and it's got like light and dark flecks in it. I love that color, to be honest. So the reason we've got that color is because what we did is we sanded it down. But when we sanded it down, we didn't sand all the color out. We left some of the original color in and we got a real good color match, which was quite close, very close. But what we've done is we stained it and then sanded it, wet sanded it, stained it again, then put a lacquer on, then wet sanded again to get nice and smooth, then put in a couple more coats of lacquer on. And that's given us a really nice sort of two-tone wood effect where there's dark and lights all rippling through the wood. It looks absolutely stunning. Um, so I'm really chuffed with that. So now we're going to go on to buttons. Now, guys, we are going to start buttoning. So I'm going to pull that as tight, tight as I can. So I'm going to pull nice and tight. Pulling the button through. So what I'm doing is, guys, making sure that I'm going as tight as I can. I don't want any looseness. So on previous videos, I normally mark out my buttons, but with leather, and especially this leather, there's quite a lot of stretch. So. What I'm going to do here is just cut away the Dacron where the arms go and I'm going to cut into the lever, pull it up nice and tight and staple it off under and underneath. So on this chair there's three sections, two arms and a back where the seat actually sits around. So what we're doing here is we're putting a little bit of lever on, and we're putting some cardboard strip back tack on, we're going to pull that down and staple it off around the seat. I'm going to make some cuts so it sits nice and flat. So what this is essentially doing is when you're sitting on the seat and you look down where the arm is or where the back is, you see blue leather. You don't see any wood underneath it because there is going to be a gap. So this is why we do this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start fitting the seat. So it's going to take some work to push it in. Make sure it's all in the right place. I've got to push all the lever under the back, get it all through, and then we're going to start stapling it all off and getting the pleats all nice and start stapling off and finishing. Right, so pleats on the outside. So what we've done is we stapled this down, this foam, seat around there. So that's all pinned down. So now we just want to get some nice straight pleats. Today we are going to put this inside back on. So what I'm going to do here is I've got my lever cut to size and I've measured it here at the back. See, that's the widest point. So what I'm going to do is just put a nip in the top and the bottom in the middle, just so I know where I'm going to start. I'm going to start by putting one staple in the middle. Or two. I'm just going to pull up, take the tension out, Go straight through there, pull through. Now I'm just going to tie this off at the back and I'll get, I'll pull you around in a bit. I won't do this one, but the next one I'll get you guys to come around and watch what I do at the back. So that's the first button in. I'm going to work our way over to this button. So what I use is other bits of leather, just cut a little, squ cut a little square, roll it up. And then here on this twine, so what we do is here, hold them together. Go under and through. That's our loop. And now if we get our leather. Put that in there. And see there, we tightened it. 
what we're doing here is using my blunt staple lifter to dress the pleats around. It's a lot of work, it's dressing pleats. As you can see here, more pleats, dressing them around, stapling them off. Now we're doing these side faces, guys. Apologise that we've lost a bit of footage there. So now, I'm going to cut off this excess lever. We need to be very careful. So now we're onto the arms. I'm just going to put some Dacron over the foam. And we're going to start stapling our lever off. Now we're going to start dressing the pleats around the back. And as you can see here, tidying the lever up so it looks really nice and it sits nicely around the back. Now we're at the front, dressing the pleats on the front and then using our Stanley knife to cut away all the excess lever. So as the back of this chair is curved, we can't just put a straight bit of cardboard strip on as it doesn't curve. So what we're doing is we're putting little nips in the, in the cardboard strip so we can curve it round and staple it off and get a nice finish. So snipping as we go. And you'll see that the lever gets quite tight as it needs to be. Now we're putting our metal gripper down the sides. This is going to be to finish off the side of the outside back. I always use long staples with metal gripper, so it has to go through quite deep, hold quite strong. So I always use like 14 or 12 mil staples. Then we're putting a hessian lining on just to give the outside back some strength because that's what you do when you're doing good quality work. And we staple the hessian off. Cut off your excess so it's nice and flush. And you've got a nice strong back. After this we're going to add on Dacron. And glue it on. We also staple it on as well so it doesn't move. Because if you don't staple it on and you only glue it, when you pull the fabric down, chances are it will move. Now we're pulling our outside back up nice and tight, stapling off. What I'm doing here is putting the lever under the metal gripper. We've previously done a detailed video on how to use metal gripper. We will put that in the link above. Now we're using lovely French gold studs to finish it off. And if you are interested, let me know and I'll do a detailed video on how to do studding. Here's the finished product. Absolutely over the moon with this. I think it looks absolutely stunning. I'd have loved to have kept it. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time.